and welcome to Griffin Update. I'm Brooke Anderson. And I'm Tommy Marshall. Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll provide you with a review on Missouri Western's most recent colorful theatrical production. We'll also provide you with a recap of Western's homecoming parade, which is always a huge hit with the community. And of course, Omari Martin will join us for her sports report. But first, let's learn more about Hispanic Heritage Month. Ooh, that sounds interesting. It is. There's music, dancing, and discussion. Reporter Jesse Edson has a story and can tell us more. The month of September 15th to October 15th is a time for music, dancing, and discussion. Western Center for Multicultural Education hosted several events this year in honor of the Hispanic Heritage Month. These events include a Zumba night, special lunch days, a movie night, and the Hispanic Heritage Banquet. The banquet is usually the most attended event on campus during Hispanic Heritage Month, and this was no exception according to Diana Hidzir. And we had attendees, I think there were almost I think 80 people registered RSVP'd and the turnout was very well. Those who attended the event were treated to music by Aslan, food provided by Aramark, and poetry by both a student and guest poet. At the banquet, Diara Dominguez was able to perform some poetry he had written. It had something to do with uh, the connection of what Hispanic feel at this moment, especially like with everything like the politics going on. Uh, the new presidency, so I feel uh, it was in a way appropriate to do it at the Hispanic Heritage Banquet. Dominguez's poetry touched on the subject of hate speech and racism that he faces in his personal life. At the time I lived in a predominant, in the United States, lived in a predominantly white neighborhood, so um, that happened to me about almost every day racism happened, when I was a kid at least. Dominguez opened for Denise Frauman, an award-winning poet who was invited by the CMA to educate and encourage students. Um, she has, she's a person with a Hispanic background. She's also from the LGBT community. So at the same time, we want people to realize that it doesn't matter what, ma what majority you are from, what minority you are from, you, you are still able to become someone and people are able to know you still. She Frauman performed poetry about a variety of topics including Borders, her first kiss, mass shootings, and dancing with her grandmother. Aside from being a poet, a lyricist, she's also known to be an educator. So she didn't she didn't just step on stage and perform five poems and get got back to her seats. She didn't do that. She actually before every poem that she originally wrote herself, she explained what actually triggered her to write that poem. Both Hidzer and Dominguez believe that discussing and celebrating culture is an important part of the college experience. I think it's important to have these events to spread out diversity on campus and to make people appreciate who they really are. Sometimes the, the students that I come across, they tend to be someone they're not. They tend to be someone they're not. So basically bringing these cultures and performances, events, they are able to feel like home. They are able to feel welcomed on campus, not just in the school, but in the country as well. People have to be willing to get to know other people from different races or different cultures, uh, different skin colors, right? For Griffin Update, this is Jessica Edson. Thanks, Jesse. Hispanic Heritage Month provided students with a chance to learn and celebrate. Yeah, that looked like a lot of fun. I hope a lot of people got out and took advantage of it. Yeah, me too. So Tommy, have you ever attended an SGA meeting? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, here at Missouri Western, students interested in student government can attend three meetings and eventually end up being part of SGA themselves. No way. Yes way. Just recently, SGA filled several of its vacant seats with students who did just that. Reporter Austin Bauer has the story. After weeks of vacancies, SGA Senate seats are now all filled up. SGA approved six senators to join SGA at their meeting on October 10th. Reese Christensen was the first student to be added to Senate on Monday night. Your new mentor is Senator Thomas. All right.
Uh, it's it's kind of a relief, um, you know, uh, all that all those meetings sitting in the back and wanting to participate in like vote on legislation and being able to do more than just comment is uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 kind of exciting. I'm not gonna be up here and be one of those ones who are just quiet. If I if I'm not gonna be one who is just noise, but if I have something to say and it's, I feel like it's important, I'm definitely gonna voice my opinion. I'm not going to just sit there. Other newly inducted senators said they look forward to their new responsibilities. Uh, pretty exciting. I still kind of tentative sitting there, like sitting at the table and seeing the discussion. There's a lot of times where I was like wanting to speak, but it's like it's my first day. Better wait it out. So I don't want to say anything stupid on my first day. Uh, what I look forward to is like table discussions and the collaboration and just working with people I really enjoy and I look forward to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to representing my constituency on campus as well as getting more involved and learning more about how the organization runs and what I can do to help benefit Missouri Western. To get this far though, Sanders had to qualify and go through several steps. SGA President Alec Guy explains. For SGA, when you want to become a senator, uh, there are kind of multiple steps to the process. So um, we have elections every spring to elect new senators, um, and usually that fills up the Senate, but sometimes over the summer, um, individuals have to drop. They, you know, find out they don't really have time or for personal reasons or things like that. So we head into um, the semester, and sometimes we don't have a full Senate anymore. And at that point, um, new uh, people seeking to be a senator for SGA can come to three meetings. Um, and then they have to have a 2.25 GPA or above, um, as well as be a full-time student at Missouri Western. And once they meet those requirements, I set up an interview with them just to kind of get to know them a little better. And then traditionally, I would just appoint them. Senate seats may be filled up, but for those looking to be a part of the SGA action, there still may be a place for you. Of course, always, you know, we have associate um, senator spots open, so if you're interested in being involved in SGA, you can uh, still come to three SGA meetings and become a member of student government, or, you know, if you just want to make your voice heard, we're always open. We're in our office in Blum 217 a lot. This is Austin Bauer reporting for Griffin Update. For more information about SGA or becoming an associate senator, stop by SGA office in Blum 217 or visit missourywestern.edu slash SGA. That's really cool. I think I could rock being an associate senator. Well, they did say that they would take any students. That's true. Well, while I try and convince Brooke that I'd make a great associate senator, we're going to take a short break and be right back. You're my advisor. Why can't you just pick my classes for me? Look, I'm in a hurry. Can I just get my pen and go? My brother's been here before, so he'll help me sign up for classes. But your brother was a biology major, not an engineer. Yeah, but he knows like everybody. I'd like one more semester of easy classes. What do you mean it's not offered until next year? But it's been noted in the course catalog that way this whole- But I need that class to graduate with my boyfriend! This is a great degree plan. Thanks! I made it in University 101. My peer mentors helped me a lot. Let's use this time to talk about your graduate school track. Here are some internships and practica that you may want to consider. Also, we can start... Take ownership of your education. Make the most of your advisement by being proactive, punctual, and prepared. You'll open the door to more personalized attention and avoid costly setbacks. It's never too soon to begin planning your next steps at Missouri Western. Welcome back. So Tommy, how good are you at spelling? I'm G-R-E-A-T. Well that's great because Missouri Western recently put on a production of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, which show the weekends of the 15th and 22nd of October. Reporter Jesse Johnson has the story. The cast and the crew did a great job of putting the show together. T. Quillen is the director for the show and he has many responsibilities basically put the idea for the show together. Uh, the playwright has a lot of the, um, the playwright obviously tells the story. We will take a look at it and see if there's anything that needs to be reinterpreted about it or if there, you know, if we want to reinterpret anything about it. We don't always, but with, in, in this case, we kind of, there's a, there were a few things that we wanted to, to re-examine a little bit just because of our cast. Um, and so we just, that, it's that kind of thing. But ultimately it's um, the way that I tell my students is uh, I'm the 
I'm the audience's advocate all the way through the rehearsal process. I sit out in the audience and go, okay, this is what the audience would want to see. Antonio Daniels Brazil is one of the actors from the show. He plays the vice principal who reads the words for the contestants to spell. He enjoyed working with this production's cast and crew. This is like fantastic. Like everyone is on point. Like everyone like brings forth a strong performance, and it's it's just really great. Missouri Western students Matt Schultz and McKenna Snyder came out to support their fellow Griffins for the show. That was a plus. We have. Thought the show was pretty darn great. Schultz heard about the production from another friend of his. So a good friend of mine, Caleb McKnight, who's an RA in Liberton Hall. <laughs> thought that there was a spelling bee on campus, and so when we looked into it, because he really wanted to go, um, we found out that it was actually a play. Although Putnam wasn't a real spelling bee, the cast still delivered an authentic and fun performance. Other shows this season will include Blur, The Wedding Singer, and Macbeth. For Griffin Update, I'm Jesse Johnson. Thanks, Jesse. Wow, that show looked A-W-E-S-O-M-E. A-B-S-A-L-O-O-T-I-E? I thought you were a great speller. Well, before that package, I was. But at least the people in the show are better spellers than I am. So, Brooke, we already know that you hit the pumpkin patches, but did you make it to the pumpkin fest? No, actually, what's that? Well, I could try and tell you, but reporter Tanner Cobb has a story and could probably explain it in better detail. For the past 20 years, Pumpkin Fest has taken place in St. Joseph. Pumpkin Fest is a fun family weekend, Halloween themed event for people of all ages. There are many different festivities that happen during the weekend, and I was able to go down there and check it out. Uh, this weekend at Pumpkin Fest, there is all kinds of entertainment lined up. Tonight we've got Phil Vandal playing, we've already had Magic from BJ Tally. We've got the Baker family, who's been here multiple years, performing at our gazebo tonight. Of course, lighting a pumpkin mountain is always a big deal. And then tomorrow, costume parade, we've got a dance company coming in. We've got uh, the Baker family again doing some stuff. Busy, busy weekend. Lots of entertainment for basically any age. There were also very many different vendors and booths all over Pumpkin Fest. This is what one vendor had to say about it. Hi, my name is Jamie Garten. I'm here at the Pumpkin Fest. Uh, the name of our booth is It's a Girls Thing. We've been coming here for four years now. We enjoy coming to Pumpkin Fest as there are a lot of things to do here. There's carnival rides, there's games, there's pumpkin uh, painting, there's face painting, and also in a couple weeks we will be at the Southside Fall Festival. Along with booths, there is also stuff being sold. As you can see, some people are better at the whip than others. There were very many fun games that were played at Pumpkin Fest, which brought in quite the crowd of people, youth in particular. That was the favorite for most, although there were pony rides as well, which was another preferred activity for the long, eventful weekend. Before the night concluded, townsfolk who attended, along with co-workers, sang happy birthday to a woman who had a huge part and makes the Pumpkin Fest 2016 happen. Good, let's embarrass the heck out of her. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mignon. Happy birthday to you. Friday night, at a specific time, they flip a switch and all the pumpkins light up that are on there. And at 8 p.m. tonight, we're going to flip that switch again. Five, four, three, two, one. Fest 2016 was a very memorable family weekend full of fun. This is Tanner Cobb reporting from Griffin Update. Wow, that looked like a lot of fun. I can't believe I missed it. No worries. At least you know you can catch it next year since it happens annually here in historic St. Joseph. Definitely. Well, Missouri Western's homecoming happened earlier this semester, and there were a lot of festivities for students and the community to enjoy, including the homecoming parade. Oh yeah, don't the local high school marching bands participate in that? They sure do. It's like a competition for them, as a matter of fact. 
I was on scene and got an inside look at what goes on into putting an event like this together. Let's take a look. There was a lot of candy throwing, tuba playing, and fraternity chantings at this year's homecoming parade, but organizing it and putting it all together was no easy task. It took a lot of work getting all of the organizations in the lineup and figuring out who was going to be in the parade and all the bands and everything that we had was kind of a struggle, but I think it turned out pretty well. 60 different organizations walked or marched in the parade, making the planning of the lineup somewhat of a struggle. Well, this year we had um, 16 marching bands and we had 60 entries. And of those 60, 40 of them had um, music on their boat. <laughs> and they couldn't be within two um, vehicles in between the marching bands. They had to be at least two. So that was really challenging to figure that out. The parade showcased 16 high school bands from around the area as well as Missouri Western's very own Golden Griffin Marching Band. So the organization for the parade doesn't really take a whole lot of time, but once we get to it, the students really fire up and I think they performed really well on Saturday. Gay explains his favorite part of the parade is getting to see all of the high school bands perform for the community. For me, as a musician, I think the the thing I enjoy the most is seeing all the other high school bands there. I think we had about 16 or so, it was over a dozen bands. Uh, my wife's band was there, so I got a chance to see her kids perform and see them in action. The homecoming parade also serves as a competition for 16 to 20 local area high school bands who gather right here in front of City Hall to warm up before the big march. The parade is organized by the classes of the bands. Uh, there's four, we have five classes school size, 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, and the parade is organized by the classes, and that makes it easier for the judges to judge them, because all the 1As go by at the one time, all the 2As go by, all the 3As go by, and so on. The winners are selected by a panel of three judges, all critiquing the bands on sound, style, and look. It's drawn up. Each judge has the same sheet, and it's broken down into music, uh, marching maneuvering, and that is just talking about step style, uh, foot style, uh, posture, uniformity in that respect. Each class category gets a first, second, and third place winner, but what they're all competing for is the overall trophy, going to the best high school band of the parade. What we have is what we call a traveling trophy, and this kind of entices that band to come back every year. The overall, we have a sweepstakes score, and whoever wins that gets the overall trophy. They get to take it home, but they have to win the overall three years in a row to keep the trophy. This year's winner of the overall award was the Cameron Marching Dragons, winning it for the second year in a row. Reporting for Birth and Update, I'm Brooke Anderson. Homecoming. It's always a lot of fun. It is. And if you want to find out more information on homecoming events, visit MissouriWestern.edu. Hello, Mari. Hey, guys. Can you tell us what's been going on in Missouri Western sports? After this quick break, I'll catch us up on what's recently been happening in Griffin soccer and volleyball on today's sports report. On my honor, I will never betray my badge. My integrity, my character, or the public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for my acts. I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve my community and the agency I serve. My community and the agency I serve. Welcome back to Griffin Update Sports. I'm your host, Samari Martin. Coach Tad Edwards in the girls' soccer program went into Friday night's contest looking to make program history a program that not so long ago was destined to finish at the bottom of the MIAA table each year. Sports reporter Anthony Crane shows us this historic win. The Missouri Western women's soccer team played their final home game of the 2016 season Friday night at Spratt Stadium. It would be the last home game ever for the three seniors on the team. The Griffins face our tribal Northwest Missouri State. The Bearcats came into the game with a 4-10-1 record on the season and looked to play spoilers in their matchup with Western. The Bearcats would strike first in this match on a beautiful 15-yard shot from the Northwest forward. It's the second game in a row the Griffins have found themselves down early. 
Later on in the half, the Griffin Sarah Blakely would take a deep shot that's just a bit high, but Cassidy Minky would be there for the putback. The goal would give her the program record for goals in a season. Yeah, it's really cool. That's you know, it's funny that we got down a goal because we you know at um, halftime last week uh, when we were down a goal, you know, that's kind of the makeup of this team for some. You know, we get down, but we find a way to come. You know, for level. And they, they are they we're up a goal and somebody we concede one, we seem to find a way to go get that Absolutely. Game. Yeah, my job is to score goals and help the team win and I just try to do that every game. Three Western defense led by senior Taylor Gant would hold strong for the rest of the match, keeping the Bearcats offense at bay. Hard and we outworked people who were against us and we were able to pull it in. And guess who was there for the offense when they needed it? Minky adds to her record with a game winning goal with just five minutes left. Team worked really hard. We just gave it our all in that second half to get a win for the seniors and to come in better, better place in the conference. The win would add to the program record for wins, which is now at 11. The Griffins will play their final match of the season Sunday at Central Missouri. This is Anthony Crane reporting for Griffin Update. Coach Edwards and the Griffins will enjoy this win, but they all have high hopes for more than just a 10-win season. The Griffins will look to add to that win total against rival Northwest Missouri State on Friday and the regular season finale against Central Missouri. In other sports news, the Griffin volleyball team started strong their 2016 season. The team has been successful for numerous reasons, but two of those reasons are Courtney and Rachel. Courtney and Rachel make their connection look easy, but the road to creating it was not without obstacles. Sports reporter Blair Russell got to know these two a little better. Griffin Volleyball is off to a strong start for the 2016 season with a 10-4 record. Leading the Griffins are senior setter Courtney Bloffus and sophomore middle blocker Rachel Fredericks. I think we both have really high expectations for each other, so that's what makes it like, I think that's where you can see our connection come through, just because I know what she's capable of and she knows what I'm capable of, so you can just usually see our facial expressions towards each other, and whether, whether we're both showing emotion or we're not, you just know that we're in it together for the most part. So, Although the duo has shown an undeniable connection on the court, they have only played together this year, as Fredericks was only a freshman last year and Bloffus was behind senior setter Jordan Chohan. I think Courtney has definitely become more confident in who she is as a setter. And you can see it when she gets on the court, she's such a leader. She brings a lot of energy to the court, so she's fun to play with. So I think that's how she's definitely grown for most years. Coming through this year, this is a way different group of girls last year, and so I don't even feel like I didn't play last year. I feel like I've been playing with these girls for almost four years now. So it took a mental toll, but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. Playing as a freshman was very nerve-wracking. I think I'm more of a top hitter this year. I think I'm more of a go-to than I was last year since we had a really good outside, so I feel like transitioning to this year, I've worked a lot of getting a lot of kills and getting a lot of blocks. I think a difference from last year and this year for her is, like she said earlier, her mentality when she's on the court, she knows um, she's a go-to every time, and she takes that and drives it every game, and she showed up to play every game. So, Establishing a connection on the court isn't the only obstacle the Griffins have had to overcome. In just the sixth game of the season, Fredericks came down from a block and elbowed Bloffus's nose, breaking it. Um, it happened fast. I don't really know. I didn't. I didn't really know that she even came down on a block. And then I was looking at Blair, and she just kind of looked at me, and it was just like, okay, yep, yeah, it's broke. So I mean, it just happened really fast. But um, it was pretty much trying to play with something on my face that really inhibited my eyesight. Looking past the players' obstacles and statistics, they describe what it's like playing with each other. It's a blast. It's fun. I like my it's just, party. It's just fun. <laughs> the Griffins will continue their season with conference play through November. For more information, check out gogriffins.com. The Griffins continue into their second round of conference play and are hoping to finish their third consecutive season with a 20-plus win, which will be the first time in program history since becoming Division II. 
On this segment of One on One, we are joined on Griffin Update by Griffin football player Darian Bass. Before we jump into your football career here as a Griffin, I know you were torn in between playing football and basketball. How did you decide on which sports to play in college? I feel like football provided more of an opportunity. Uh, of course, you got more people on the field. And I'm not saying that I was scared of a challenge with basketball, but I think my heart leaned more towards football. Tell me about an experience playing basketball. Uh, the crazy, the crazy experience is that this is the only sport that I got to play against my brother in. And uh, I always play up, so my team will play high school levels, and he was with his high school team. And uh, I hit my first three, and he was guarding me, so I feel like nobody can say nothing. What position did you play? I was power forward, and uh, two shooting guard. Now we talked a little bit earlier and you told me you were able to play with some guys who are now playing professional in the NBA. How is that playing with them? Uh, it's, it's crazy now to see that we played against each other and they're established already, I guess. Um, at, at first it was just like a brotherhood. I played with Bradley Beal, uh, Patrick McCall, and uh, I mean, Paul McRoberts, he, he actually played with the Rams right now. so. Back at home, everybody played both sports or ran track or didn't only do one sport. So it was a blessing, actually, and I still t stay in touch with those guys. Why did you choose to come to Missouri Western? Uh, I felt like the coaches already knew me. They understood who I was and had respect for me. Compared to going to a small D1 or D1 AA, I felt like I would be able to make a name for myself and have a successful career anywhere else, but I felt like Missouri Western already had a foundation with me with my brother being here and the coach is showing me respect compared to uh, committing to Tulsa or Illinois and their coaching staff actually got fired before my official visits there. Would you say that your brother had a big impact on your decision to come here? Uh, I do believe so. And a, a bunch of people say, well, why did you follow your brother or do you mind being compared to him? It's actually not a bad comparison because he's a great role model. A lot of people look up to him, not only me, and I feel like that's a positive. Now, your brother is playing professional. He plays for the Tennessee Titans. How big of an impact does he have on your life now that he's playing professional? Do you look up to him highly or do you look at him the same? Everybody be like, bro, your brother play in the league. Like, they gotta mean something to you. And I'm like, yeah, it ain't hit me yet because that's almost expected of him. And it's a, it's a great, opportunity for him and as well for me but um, scouts come to practice and they know me because of him so I feel like I got my foot in the door and I just gotta finish it off. Tell me a funny moment you and your brother share that you will never forget. Uh, I was I would say I was about eight years old and uh, we were in the backyard and he was like do a drill with me and I'm like all right you can't you, like you can't mess with me I'm better than you and I I was running my mouth, so we got on our backs and did the hamburger drill. And the first person to get up, you got to run towards the person. Like, if he's the ball carrier, I got to tackle him, or if I'm the ball carrier, he got to tackle me. So the best bet is to be the first person to get up so they won't have much power. Well, of course, he was the first person up, and he hit me so hard, <laughs> I didn't, like, I didn't want anything else to do with football. I would have loved to see that. Now your parents, how big of an influence does your mom and dad have on you? Uh, my dad was a basketball superstar in Wellston, where Patrick McCaw grew up at, and um, he passed away when I was four years old. My brother, well not my brother, but my mom, she, she wouldn't let me get by with anything. Like, I tried to quit football when I was little, and she was like, well, you're not quitting, you're going to practice, so you might as well get over it. And I, I sat in the car, after school and just waited to practice and cried my eyes out. And uh, we went to practice and my stomach was hurting because I was so nervous and I didn't, I didn't really like football when I was younger. And uh, she just pretty much said, well, you're gonna play it. So she was like, well, I'll take you home and you can use the bathroom. So then I went home, took a, uh, sat in the bathroom for a while and then came out and tried to play the game. And she was like, no, we're about to go back to practice. So I was like, well, I'm pretty much stuck into playing football and it turned out for the better. Now on this segment of one-on-one, -on -one, I actually went down to the football field with Darian Bass and he showed me some of his moves. Check this out. I need three minutes of football thing. Teach me one of your moves. All right, I'm gonna teach you how to get a quarterback set. Okay. 
And with that being said, you first got to be the tackle, a tight end, or possibly a running back, depending on their schemes. So to start, if a tackle sets on me, my initial move is going to be a chop rip. I got to have something planned first. And then once I get my chop rip, if he replaces his arms, I got to have a combo okay. to alter that move. So then it'll be a swim move. But I don't want to swim too wide because if he get my ribs, then he'll wash me out or he could break a rib. So after I, I do my chop, <laughs> after I do my chop rip, I'm going to spin tight and then I got to catapult myself behind him. So at that point, I'm behind him already and now I can play, make a play in the backfield. Okay, let me try this karate chop. It might be a little difficult, but it ain't too difficult. Okay, so I'm going down, up, around, and... A little bit. I put my flavor in it. That's how I would do it. But I'm going to leave the football stuff up to you. So tell me a little bit about your journey as a Griffin. How do you think you've improved as a player over the years? I've been a Griffin for quite some time now. Uh, coming in freshman year, I was with my brother, and he showed me the ropes. I was actually playing defensive end with him in a 4-3 defense, and he showed me a lot as far as how to treat the program, how to respect other players, and become a respected player. So I had a hiccup in a row my sophomore year, and I was ineligible due to academics. And I feel like the biggest highlight of my career was that season that I came back, which was 2015. And I had one of my better seasons, and. Uh, I feel like that's, that led me with momentum into this season. So what's the atmosphere like on game day? It's wild. Game day, you wait all week for it, and then once it finally get here, you got to keep yourself calm for so many hours because a lot of times you might have a night game or you got to go through the rituals as far as eating in, a, eating in a calf or getting ready in the indoor. And once game day get here, you, you love to see the fans in the crowd, you love to see the opponents and hear what they got to say to you while you're warming up on their sideline. So it's amazing. How's your relationship with the team? I love my guys. Uh, I think I love them more than I should. <laughs> not, not saying that in a weird way, but like we got so much chemistry. We goof around in the locker room, we play off the field. I feel like this year, we had some of the best chemistry that we had in a while. And I mean, we played two on two in the bas in basketball in the locker room, which I think I'm the champ. Me and Wish are 4 1. So. I see that on Snapchat. That's pretty funny watching you guys. <laughs> Last season, you were able to play with Mike Jordan, Sam Brown, Yami Ali, Jonathan Owens. You guys are all from the same area in St. Louis. How was it playing with them last season? Uh, I didn't know a few of them before I got here. I didn't know Mike, I didn't know Yami. And once I got here, I came up a lot to see my brother play and that's when I began to get to know them. And from there, I mean, we just we just linked. Like, we got a lot of, a lot of things in common and now those are some of my best friends. Who are some of your role models you look up to in football? David Bass, that's, that's mandatory. Big but outside, <laughs> outside of that, uh, Christian Kirksey, he's from St. Louis, he went to Iowa. I ain't played with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Deion Buchanan, he's a small linebacker, and that's pretty much what motivates me is that I'm not more of a heavy set guy, and just to see small guys like him and Tavon, Tavon Smith, uh, I feel like I can do it. I know I can. Well, my role model is Des Bryant, and if I could play on any dream team, it would be the Cowboys. Who is your dream team? It gotta be San Diego. I wanna move to San Diego when I grow up. Broke with your poor. I will be in San Diego. <laughs> San Diego Chargers, hopefully they stay there. Stay tuned. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this. Stay tuned for more one-on-one -on -one with Mari Martin. <laughs> he just took my job. Every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better. Keep your eyes on the road. Welcome back. Thanks, Amari. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage.
For all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching. And remember, go, go Griffs! Griffs.